Hey everybody, Speedy Tech 7 here. And as you can see, I've got my computer building stuff. That's right. Replacing the HP Slimline that my parents had bought and were using for the longest time as their main computer. But recently the power supply has just been giving out and we're done with putting up with it. I'm not I don't like it. It gets way too damn hot. Power supply is nowhere near powerful enough and I offered to build them a new computer. Uh, it's a budget one, but it's still going to be plenty powerful for what they do. Uh, it's got the AMD A4 3300, which, if my camera ever focuses, you can see it has the 2.5 gigahertz uh, clock, and I didn't want to use the APU graphics that it has, so I got them this lovely Asus GT GeForce GT610 which will be more than enough power plus it's silent which will be great for in here and I like that it was the uh, 2 gigabyte option as well and then because it was on sale I, I had only intended on getting them 4 gigs of RAM but uh, this was on sale for the same amount as 4 gigs of RAM so we got a lovely Patriot G2 DDR3 set of RAM that's designed for the Intel 6 series platform. Uh oh, I'm in trouble. I'm using it on AMD. No. Um, yeah, this should actually perform real well. Uh, it's far more impressive than what I was in going to get them, so it's great. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Got them a Gigabyte motherboard. I was going to get Asus, but all the Asus motherboards out there, that uh, the only ones they had at the time were strictly for gaming purposes. They were just too expensive and I couldn't justify the cost. So I got a Gigabyte motherboard, which should be more than suitable. They make good motherboards. I've never had issue with Gigabyte. Alrighty then. And then I got this lovely CM. Cooler Master uh, 360, yeah, 360 case with power supply in the front, and it's kind of interesting. I thought this was kind of a cool feature of the case, is that it's top vented, which I like. But uh, that's how the power cable runs. This is the power cable. Since the power supply is in the front right here, it runs this power cable around into the back here, so you can still plug it in, in the back like a normal computer and everything. So I think uh, I think this will be a real good performer. I bought this case actually. Uh, it was discounted because it was previously used once. And right here, you can see this is from an Asus motherboard. This connector it makes it e the easy connect connector uh, for their uh, their brand of motherboards. So that's lovely. Uh, I'm sure I'll make use of it. And also, it didn't come with this PC speaker. And that came with the Asus motherboard, so perhaps I'll get use out of that. I don't know, I find PC speakers annoying. That's why I generally don't put them in on my computers, but hey, we'll see. Maybe I can make use of it. So, um, yeah, I guess I will get to building. Unfortunately, they were all out of the CPU in uh, brand new in box condition. So I had to get one that had been returned, but it's guaranteed working, but I am going to have to wipe off the old heat compound. Even though it was only used for a couple of days, I'd, I'd rather start fresh. And I'm going to have to put on some brand new Arctic Silver. And I say have to as if it's a chore, but honestly I kind of enjoy doing it, so. Yeah, let's get to that, uh, that installation. Let me grab the box for the motherboard, wherever I decided to throw it. Um. Oh no, it didn't come with screws. Okay, well, I'm gonna go have to dig out some screws. Maybe not. Never mind, I found the screws. We're all good. So, I'm gonna get to work and hopefully be in frame. Make sure that's in the frame really quickly.
Okay, that should be good enough. I think you can see that well enough to be good. That'll hook to the motherboard if I have anything to say about it. So, to get started here, I'm going to go grab my anti-static bracelet. I'm sure I have it where I don't know where it is, so that'll be a minute. Okay, so I got lucky, and I actually found my anti-static bracelet. And uh, I'm now going to ground myself to the case. So there's also, if you don't have an anti-static bracelet and you're assembling a computer, no need to worry, it's not that big of a deal. All you gotta do is before you handle something that's sensitive is just touch the case and you should be good to go. Alrighty then, enough with the off-color off jokes. Let's get assembling in my chair that is too damn short for me. There we go, that's better. I feel much taller. Okay. So, motherboard gets to go in first. Oh, it's not going to stay out of my way, but that's okay. Is that not nice or what? Look at, look at that motherboard. I think that'll do great. And uh, since this is a bulldozer, or not a bulldozer, a uh, an FX series processor, it'll do great in the FM1 slot, or uh, zip socket, sorry. It's 10.30, I'm officially messing up what I'm saying. Luckily, I still have all the brain functionality, it's just it's not getting all to my, uh, to my mouth. So I gotta first pop in this little back plate. Make sure to put it the right way. I've seen people put it in upside down. It just looks stupid. And when you pop it out, it always deforms. There we go. And that should do it. Has done it. Cool. So now for this, which is just determined to keep getting in my way. Try to get this Medusa to stay over here. Looks like it will. Now, as I lift up the brand new motherboard. utmost precaution to place it in its spot correctly. I don't know how many times I've seen people manage to actually not have a screw holder in the right area. It looks like I have one in the wrong area, or a couple in the wrong area, so I'm going to move those really quickly. Come on, motherboard. Come up here. It looks like for this to work, I need one here, and yeah, I need one here, and I need one here, and I don't need these two. So, I have a pair of pliers close to on hand. As close to on hand as anything is for me. Should be down here. There they are. Keep a toolbox behind my camera. You wouldn't want to see my toolbox, it's quite hideous, I assure you. Okay, finish. Scratching my eye. Feeling a lot better now? Okay. Time to continue. Let's plug my bracelet back into its alligator clip. Move that. 
and I'm ready to move these. So this one's going to go in right here. Looks like the other one needs to go right here. And then that should safely cover all of the bases. Yep, looks like it. So I will get on that right this instant. Just unscrew it. And normally I would have a socket for this, but since I'm not at my general place of work, I don't have the correct socket. But that's okay. Most of this stuff can be jury rigged. and I'm going to check that I'm still in frame because I know I've been gradually sliding around. There. Okay. Motherboard. Meet your new home. And I will run some tests on this when I'm done building it so you can see its performance and such. And I usually run it with a tool that, so uh, you can also check it against yours and see how it compares. I'm sure it won't beat it if you have a good computer because quite clearly this is just designed to be a family unit model. Screwdriver. Here. For those of you that are into their tools and know what they're looking at. This is a Husky set of tools and I highly recommend Husky brand tools. They are great performers. Mm, I still might have to go grab some screws. I don't think there's enough in there. But that's okay, I'm not too worried about it. I'm really not. Also, I think I have more screws right behind me. Look at that. Oh boy, am I in luck. Another four screws in a brand new package. I think they came with a uh, case mountable fan that I had somewhere. That's what I did with that. I have a really bad habit of losing stuff a lot. computer will be a very good performer for the cost. I, did I mention that I only spent $260, not including tax? You can do that, Washington State tax, if you want. I think it came to like $280 something. There you go. 
go. It's a nice and solidly mounted motherboard. It's not going nowhere. Alrighty then. So now I'd say it's time to drop in the central processing unit. Which I have right here. And I am now taking out of its lovely case. Wow, this chip has a lot of heft to it. It's very densely packed, I think. Yeah, that's got a lot of heft. So I'm going to line up this golden triangle at the bottom here with the triangle on the chip socket. And as usual, do a little force in the middle and push down. And now it's sealed into its ZIF socket. And grab the fan. Whoever returned it had all the stuff still. This is very clean. It's actually still quite wet, but I'd prefer not to use it. I just don't think it's going to be good thermal conductivity. But that's okay. Because, as always, I have my 91% isopropyl alcohol. And I'm going to go grab what I should have grabbed when I was repasting my server. A lint-free and anti-static, uh, what's it called, cloth. So I'll be right back with that. Alrighty, I'm back. And after plugging this in, I can show you what I have here. So what I have here is a Kimtex brand, no non-lint leaving anti-static cloth. These are great for doing work on cars, computers, just about anything. It's kind of an interesting uh, mix of material. It's almost see-through in some areas and opaque in others, but it does a great job either way. So what I'm going to do is take the isopropyl alcohol and put a dab of it on my wipe here, leaving the wipe doubled over, of course. And after it soaks through, like that, I shall use the circular motions to wipe off the processor. Being careful not to be unthorough and leave behind any of the old thermal compound because I don't want any of that on when I put on the better equivalent. Okay, so that's nice and clean. It's actually very clean now. So it looks like, and I'm not going to use it, I'm just going to use the other side of the cloth so as not to waste it and apply a little bit more alcohol and then I'll clean off the heat sink. There we go, that should be enough. If you can see that, clean off this heat sink. It's just little circular wipes and you'll get right through it. It looks like you're smearing it around at first, you're not. Okay, so I was smearing it around a little bit, it came off in large globs. Sometimes you get lucky and it comes off real easy. Ugh. Okay. 
put a little bit more on a different section of the cloth because it was actually quite thick on there. After using my circular motions, I believe I've dissipated the heat sink compound that was on there already. Sorry if I'm speaking slow, I'm taking great pride in my work at the moment. <laughs> Nice and clean. Has a little bit of marking on it, but I think that's mostly from the casting process. Anyway, it's kind of a skimpy little uh, heat sink, but I think it'll do fine. This computer isn't stressed very hard. Or it won't be stressed very hard. Anyway, I am now going to apply the Arctic Silver Paste which I have set down and then proceeded to lose. So, yeah, there it is. Forming a little hiding. It's okay though, all will be well. Um, I'm gonna go grab my spreading card as I do not have it with me already. I'm vastly unprepared as usual. Okay, I'm back and I have my spreading card now. It's my GameStop power-up card. I'm sure it'll do fine. I've never used the card. I always just use my phone number when they ask me. I'm going to use just a little bit of what's left of this alcohol down at the bottom here to wipe off the edge to make sure I have a clean application edge. It's all dry. Okay, this should be good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to squirt out some of the thermal compound onto not the CPU, but the heat sink. Because you'll notice that the heat sink's touching footprint is actually smaller than the CPU's footprint. And I don't want dust sticking to this uh, thermal compound. So I'm just going to apply it to footprint of that. And I'm going to make sure it looks like it touches there and there and there. And it should be good. It's kind of hard to do this in picture, but I'll try my best. I just got thermal compound because I thought I hadn't taken the cap off. So. first squirt out just a very little bit on there to prepare the surface which I then rub around like there's no tomorrow grab a different part of the cloth because it's starting to buckle under the lovely globiness of the arctic thermal.
Okay. So it's effectively done its job. Kind of tinting the surface as it fills all the little cracks when I do that. And I'll do the same with the processor. I'm using very little on the processor because they don't need to cover anywhere near as much space. And I'm almost out of Arctic Silver. I took a chance and didn't buy any, thinking I would have enough and hoping I'm correct. With any luck, I am. <laughs> There you go, now I have a darker AMD A4 chip. So now what I will do is I will apply the Arctic Silver to the heat sink again and begin covering. going on real smooth with this card. Happy of that because last couple of times I've accidentally grabbed cards that were bowed or just had too much flexibility in general. It didn't work out as well as this. This is just beautiful. This may be uh, my best application ever. What you want is just the thinnest layer possible, like I said. And I think I might have done that very, very well. So see there, I have a very, very, very fine layer applied ever so perfectly. It's very nice. So, I'm now going to take this and attach it to the lovely AMD processor that I have sitting here. I'll make sure I get this right on the first time. goes it straightens itself out and on there and the heat sink is now applied to the processor. I will take this fan lead and hook it into the CPU fan connector. I might tie that up. Okay next step will be RAM. I like to do this in order of visibility because if I put in that video card right now, you won't have uh, any clue what I'm doing with my hands above that card. It's just going to be it's going to be a little too tall for you guys to see. So the RAM will be the next step. Putting in this Patriot G2 Series DDR3 RAM. comes in a secondary package within that paper package. There we go. Well, look at this. I thought those heat sinks on it were uh, wrap around. Oh, and they've got quite a bit of heft. These are actually, this feels like good build quality right here. And there it is. And they're not wrap around heat sinks. They do have a break at the top. 
Not like the Corsair XMS 2 and 3. And now it's time to go in. Make sure you line up the notch correctly with the notch on the board. Push your grabbers, that's what I'm calling them for lack of the scientific or correct term, as it has escaped me. Oh, and it just snapped in there. Perfect. So far, this build is just going great. Make sure to push that open. This one's open. Line up your notch again, and get them in there. They're in close quarters, but I think that'll work out just fine. Got a nice fan, 120 millimeter size, right above them. So I'm anticipating that will go well. It's almost a shame I'm not going to be using the APU on this, but uh, I think somehow I'll live knowing that I didn't use it. Okay. Well, I'm going to now put on the headers for the front. So the first one that I'm going to install is the sound header. This There's the audio for HD audio, and then there's AC97. If you don't remember AC97, it was pretty popular around the time XP was released. Um, nowadays, these audio ports can sense when you plug in and, uh, a pair of headphones or speakers, and so that's basically what this HD audio port is for. So here's the audio and SPDIF if you so choose to use it. It's got a built-in Realtek chip on the board. I can see it here. I think it'll uh, sound pretty good, mostly because we're not looking for any professional quality sound here. We're just looking to get some sound on it. I'm looking for the USBs. There we go, F USB 1 and USB 2. So there's only two USB ports in the front, so I'll plug it into USB 1. Make sure I have it lined up the right way, and I do. There we go. And now, what we've got here are the power LED, hard drive LED, reset switch, and power switch. So now I'm going to uh, hook these up correctly, and I'm kind of curious to see if, oops, I just knocked my arc silver on the floor. Kind of curious to see if the uh, Asus connector here lines up with the one here. Mm, no, it's entirely different. My so much for that. <laughs> so hard drive plus and minus, power light. Plus and minus. Oh, okay, I see. So hard drive LED will go here. I like to get one in first and then work around it. Reset switch goes here. Um, speaker goes up there, and you know what, for the hell of it, I'll put in this little PC speaker, I don't really think it's necessary, but I'll put it in. Actually, you know what, I'm going for this most silent, clean computer, I'm not putting that in. screw it. What we got here, power switch, which hooks back behind the reset switch on this board. Now we're in reset, and there we go. And now the only thing left unhooked so far is the power LED plus and minus leads. So LEDs do have a polarity, so you have to make sure you get this one right. Plus goes here, and Minus goes here. There's positive and negative, I guess. There we go. So, the front panel connectors are hooked up now. 
And now I think the next step here is going to be putting in the hard drive and optical drive. But because I don't have the files backed up off the other computer yet, uh, I'm going to not quite do that just this minute. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably put in the optical drive first. Although I can't quite tell how easy it would be to get this hard drive in. And you know what, I'll probably hold off for the minute and um, I'll put in the graphics card. Doesn't look like it'll be too hard to, to work around it if I have to. And I'm counting on that I won't have to. Lovely Aces card. I say lovely a lot, don't I? solid connection. That'll work out well. Screw it in. Holy shit, either a gun or a firework just went off. That was incredibly loud. Just like vibrated in my stomach. I'll work through it. I hope I don't get shot in the back through the giant window behind me. Although I live on an island of rather affluent people, I don't expect that to happen. There we go. All screwed in, nice and solid. The card has two gigs of RAM. Now, even my gaming card and my computer doesn't have that. Of course, I bought a rather skimpy card, so... I wasn't really thinking too hard when I was building that computer. Okay, so I am going to work on backing up the data on the other computer, and then perhaps if I still have time tonight, I will uh, install Windows 7 on this thing and get it all up and running. Okay.